Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is 4 o'clock. It's time to begin our September 2nd afternoon meeting of the strategic planning. And at this time, the first on the agenda is a prog progression update of Highway 74. Hi, uh, I'm Donald Simpson. Uh, I am uh, representing HNTB. Uh, I used to work for them and I thought I retired, but they made me keep working, so uh, I'm here. Uh, we had given you a presentation on this, gosh, it's, it was sometime last summer, I think, a year ago. Uh, the project went on hold for quite a while, waiting to hear the resolution on bypass, the Monroe Bypass and Connector. Uh, and they finally got a record of decision, uh, and I guess it was in late June or July of this year. Uh, and so we got back on track, got uh, comments from the town staffs, and have incorporated those into the presentation. So this is, uh, this is the final plan uh, pending any comments that we get from you this evening that might change that. Uh, as a reminder, the project is uh, US 74 from basically the Union County line just uh, just southeast of Interstate uh, 485 uh, through Stallings Indian Trail and in Monroe to the Monroe City limits. Uh, the study was sponsored by the three municipalities in Union County and uh, with the idea that it transform with the, with the construction of the bypass and the connector that it transform uh, US 74 from a uh, congested, unattractive uh, street with a lot of problems to something that is uh, more structured for safety, for better access to businesses, and for a higher degree of aesthetics, and also to stimulate uh, ongoing development to benefit the, uh, the communities. The priorities uh, that we've recommended are that the top, uh, the initial uh, action should address the areas with uh, high future traffic volumes, uh, with a lot of unsignalized uh, side streets and driveways, and with uh, high crash rates. <clears throat> You'll notice on this map that most of those are in Monroe, and so uh, <laughs> we have, we've uh, proposed a lot of actions, uh, not all of which will be easy, but all of which uh, can be implemented uh, to try to address these. Moving from uh, the Indian Trail Monroe uh, boundary at Laurel Creek, uh, the proposal is that 74 be a uh, four-lane uh, boulevard with uh, what we've called a multi-way boulevard through the area that in your current land use plan is designated as a regional retail node surrounded by a traditional neighborhood development and that Rocky River Road uh, out to the bypass be a four-lane suburban boulevard. Uh, a multi-way boulevard, as we're calling it, is something that's being begun to be implemented around the country in a few places. It's not extensive yet, but uh, areas with comparable traffic volumes and issues have done this. This is uh, an example in uh, in California, the south of on the San Francisco Peninsula, where they've taken a big boulevard and they have added uh, on-street parking in front of the stores that separated from the through traffic. So the idea is that businesses get to be served by uh, slower speed traffic and on street parking at their front door, but they're separated from the through traffic so you eliminate some of those, uh, some of those conflicts. Another example of this is in St. Petersburg, Florida on uh, Tyrone Boulevard uh, where they have, they didn't do the angle parking, uh, they just, uh, have on-street parking in front of the existing businesses. So this is more of a, a phase development. Uh, from Wilson Avenue to Williams Road uh, through the area around Poplin Place and Rolling Hills Country Club, uh, 
it would the the four lane suburban boulevard would carry the projected traffic volumes which after the bypass is built and with ongoing growth in the county uh, we expect in 20 years to be about what they are now back to around 60 to 65,000 cars a day uh, you'll remember that that in an earlier version we had a, uh, a proposal to connect uh, uh, streets into Poplin Place and through the businesses um, that didn't get a good reception from the city or the staff so we've eliminated that so really other than uh, trying to do some traffic management things with signals and perhaps seeing if some uh, uh, some driveways can be closed over time uh, this would not change substantially Williams Road to Stafford Street, which gets into the heart of where the biggest traffic issues are in Monroe, uh, could remain uh, mostly uh, a four lane boulevard, but would have to be six lanes in some areas. This is the area where we've proposed, and, and I'll talk about this in more detail later, uh, a parallel street. Uh, that would give access to the businesses from two sides instead of it being all from one side and all off of 74. Uh, we've also proposed uh, the bridges, the two bridges at uh, Skyway and at Concord uh, Road are, uh, according to NCDOT, are uh, substandard and in need of replacement. So we've recommended, since those are gateways into downtown Monroe, that they, uh, when they're redone, that they have uh, an aesthetic treatment uh, above the normal DOT bridges. So if they announce that's a gateway into downtown Monroe. Uh, these areas, particularly, uh, particularly between Dickinson and Concord and between Skyway and uh, Stafford Street would also be uh, potential for the multi-way boulevard to take some of that traffic, the business access off of 74 itself. Uh, same with Stafford Street to Richardson Creek, uh, at least Stafford to, uh, uh, to Morgan Mill Road would be a, a candidate for the multi-way boulevard. And then from Morgan Mill out to uh, US 601 really is uh, uh, operating pretty well now. There's not a whole lot of direct access onto it. And it's a six lane boulevard, so it would not require very much change. Uh, and the same from uh, Richardson Creek out to the city limits is uh, uh, existing four lane boulevard. It's been built with reasonable access management. Uh, Talking about the, the parallel road network, on the east side of 74, uh, there was, uh, in, the, in the staff comments that we got, they mentioned coordinating this with the, uh, the northern loop. Uh, the, the northern loop, which, if this is, this is 74, and the northern loop would go around uh, out here. It looks like it's roughly two miles or so away from 74. Uh, it, it might divert some of the through traffic from 74, but it doesn't do a whole lot for the businesses and those, those issues of driveways directly onto 74. So what we are suggesting is that uh, Seacrest Shortcut could be realigned to uh, connect up into Davis, which is was part of the uh, the overall existing transportation plan. Uh, this is Davis down here, uh, and that could be done by what, what this does is to rationalize that intersection now. Seacrest shortcut, which comes. I think in. it's East Avenue you're talking about. Is it not? I'm sorry. Is it not East Avenue? It connects to. Secret shortcut connects to East Avenue. Under this proposal, yes, yeah. not to Wilkes. Well, I know, but it goes to East. You were saying Davis, and I thought it was East. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too many streets to keep track. Right. That's all right. 
uh, and what this would do eventually this could connect to to East Avenue and then to Sutherland uh, which goes around and connects back to uh, 74 uh, so this gives a, a parallel road that could benefit all the, all the businesses on the west side uh, what we suggested is starting that at Hanover, maybe making a better connection to commerce, uh, depending on how the small area plan that you're doing for the, uh, the Kerr Street area comes out, that there's a possibility of connecting that over to Pedro. And then this connects all those shopping areas uh, with, with access from both sides. Uh, the, reason, the reason that we're emphasizing this is that what this does for you is create a grid network that circulates around the businesses and the first step if this is secret shortcut going over to Concord uh, and then this connection that goes through Monroe Crossing and this one which was proposed as part of the northern loop you get a circulation that starts to serve these businesses uh, from from several uh, directions other than just 74 and it also creates development and redevelopment potential in some of the underutilized uh, commercial properties. Uh, in the second step, depending on you know, how you come out with the Kerr Street redevelopment area uh, and this connection over to east, uh, there's, this is also uh, in our land use analysis had a lot of potential for ultimately for redevelopment as well. Uh, there are businesses in there and other properties in there now, but uh, it's it's not the highest and best use of what it could be. And so that, as you can see, you start you start to get a real circulation system around here that really creates the regional commercial center uh, on 74 for Monroe, and then maybe. This, this little connection here goes behind the aquatic center and it would be difficult. Uh, there's a creek that runs through there and there's, you know, it would interfere with the aquatic center. So, but if that could happen, uh, then ultimately this whole area behind the Walmart Lowe Center could be developed too. And so you really have uh, a substantial uh, commercial center. Uh, none of this is very fast, step one is probably in the five to ten year time frame uh, and the others as uh, the market conditions and uh, the funding availability happens. Uh, there are some other areas for access management that can be done uh, in a shorter term. This is an example between Morgan Mill and Walkup. This is the existing area. Uh, you've got Purser Street which is a parallel street already behind here and walk up Avenue. This is Morgan Mill Road. Uh, if you close off, if you connect some of these driveways, I don't know if this shows up very well here, but if you can connect the driveways between some of these properties and close off some of the driveways, then you've got a consolidated uh, driveway access for all the property so that you can you can access them without having to go in and out of 74 to go from one to the other. Uh, they could all have right in, right out access. They also have access from Purser and so the businesses have a lot of access from two directions. It takes some of the pressure off of 74 and would make it a safer road on the other On the other side, let's see if I get back to this clever little animation here. Uh, the same thing, the, uh, the properties on the, uh, the east side, I guess that's east, is uh, they can all be connected fairly easily. Uh, there's also access from walk up around to 74, and then with right in and right out access. Uh, you, again, you can rationalize those and still have that existing cross access through the median. 
This is an example of uh, a, a town, a suburb of uh, Dallas, that did the same thing a couple of years ago, where they, this was their existing uh, dry situation on the left, where it was just a mess of uh, no real defined driveways, uh, un uncoordinated development. It was it was messy and dangerous and kind of ugly. And so they went through and they worked with the property owners and the business owners to do this consolidation. And you can see it, it works better. You've got pedestrian access and parking in front of the stores. Uh, for aesthetics overall in the corridor, the, the, uh, the bypass has proposed a very high standard of, uh, of roads for gateways. Uh, those are the two examples on the front of what the bridges would look like, and those would be gateways into Monroe. And then for uh, the bridges at uh, Skyway and Concord, uh, there are other examples of aesthetic treatments that can be done uh, without major structural modifications to the bridges. Uh, we'd recommend local gateways. Uh, some Indian Trail has already started with a wayfinding program and started putting some of those in place. And then corridor enhancements can be done with landscaping, banners, to make the whole area more attractive so that as some of that traffic pressure is relieved by the bypass, then uh, this can become more of a main street for Monroe instead of a through highway. Uh, and the intersection treatments can uh, provide for better uh, pedestrian crossings and parking. Uh, the, that's a brief overview, and of course I'll you know answer any questions that you have. But the next steps are uh, to take your comments that we get, and we're doing a presentation to the county commissioners in uh, about a week and a half, and take their comments. We'll finalize the report. Uh, there is, uh, some of the staff have suggested that uh, you may or may not want to have a resolution. We drafted one that basically said that, uh, that you might take this under advisement for input to your land use plan update. We, uh, we were fortunate in, in doing this that we happen to be doing Indian Trails uh, comprehensive plan update at the same time. So uh, they were double dipping. They got more attention than the other communities because we were working on two parts of it. And so virtually all the recommendations that we made have been incorporated into their comprehensive plan. And I think because you're about to undertake one uh, an update of both the, the land use and the transportation plan. This would be an opportunity to look at these recommendations more detail, make sure they work with the overall community, uh, and hopefully that this will become a valuable input to that. Mayor, I want to thank Mr. Simpson for his time and for this presentation, but I would like for us not to take any action on this simply because we are updating our land use plan and you made several comments in there about the current plan and right. that's what this is based on. And we also have a transportation component along with our land use plan. So I would like for this council not to take any action at this time until we get through the land use plan to make sure it's gonna work for Monroe. So with that being said, if we need a motion, I can make a motion. Okay, is that your motion? I'll make a motion then. I have a second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that will pass, we'll hold on that. Uh, the council have any questions for Mr. Simpson? Comments? No, there are some parts of it I like that I just think we need to Well, it, it does, and he's aware of it ties in with our car yeah. street. Yeah, our, and so we're, we're uh, working on car street and and redevelopment street. now, That's too. something else that's still in the works as well, right. so right. you're right in advising us to take all of that into consideration with this. So. I, I think that's probably the best approach, frankly. I mean, if, if you weren't about to undertake that, it would be a different situation, but it really gives you a chance to dig into it in more detail and coordinate it, and I'm sure that you can improve on it. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Here, none. Mr. Simpson, thank you so much for coming down and meeting with us and bringing us up to date. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working on it with you, and uh, I think actually I'm going to be a part of the land use and transportation plan, so I look forward to coming back and, great. and helping you refine it. That'd be great. Look forward to having you back, Mr. Simpson. Thank, Thank you so much. 
uh, item two is authorization uh, execution of center theater letter of intent. Uh, Pete, we recognize you at this time, sir. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, basically, the Tourism Development Authority purchased the center theater uh, last fiscal year. I brought it to you um, with the understanding that the center theater development company represented by Nathan Helms, uh, Nathan Hopper and David Helms behind me would be doing the, the majority, if not the bulk of the fundraising and renovation of the theater. Basically, we're entering into this partnership where the city does not have to expend all the funds for the renovation, but is working with a third party or a second party to um, get these funds. This way, it's not going to drain on the city. The letter of intent basically uh, was brought before the TDA last month. Um, TDA unanimously approved it. And basically, it gives uh, the, the Center Theater Development Group the authority to solicit funds since they're not the owner of the building, we're basically saying, hey, we give them permission to solicit funds for this purpose, uh, for this building. It, and uh, Mujib, if, if, if uh, I didn't explain that well enough, uh, this has been a, a several month process. We started it when uh, Mr. McCollum was here and we just tidied it up. Uh, this is the last loose end with it. So basically, it's, it's letting them have something in hand when they approach a large donor to say, hey, we're going to do this. We've got the city's blessing, um, and that's what our plan is. So I'll answer any questions you may have of this, or Nathan and David said they're welcome to any questions that they could answer at this time regarding the renovation of the theater. Mayor, if I might, the reason we asked this to come before the council today is that while council agreed and blessed the purchase of the theater, it wasn't clear that council had gone so far as to say, we're going to ask these folks to have the ability to do this level of development. So we felt as staff that it was appropriate to bring it back to you just to make sure that if you agree this is the right route to go, that we had the consent of council. And so um, both Brian, Pete, and I and, and Greg uh, sat down and, and determined that that was a way we would recommend to bring it back to you. So that's why it is here before you today. Well, I don't have a problem making a motion for authorization, the execution, and then I'd like for Nathan to answer some questions. <laughs> Second. Question or comment? Would Nathan or Mr. Hopper, either one, like to address it? They got anything they'd like? I ran into Nathan at the store and I said, we're really excited about this. So yes. I told him to be prepared to answer some questions or tell us a little bit what they're doing. Thank you, Ms. Nash. Be glad to. Uh, we're very excited about this. We always feel like we wish it could move twice as fast. We do. But <laughs> we are. We have been planning this for probably seven years, and uh, it seems to have recently gone public. But we've been working on it for a very long time. We've got a wonderful vision and a dream of about of what this could be as multi-use purpose as possible. Uh, live shows, movies, uh, meetings, conferences. Uh, lots of different venues in order to do whatever you might need to do, hopefully. Uh, we're working on the Save the Center fundraising campaign, which will kick off soon. We uh, were kind of holding back until we had this letter approved. Uh, as Pete said, we can gather local funds. So many folks are so excited about it, but if we go to a corporation for naming rights, say, or we go to a benefactor asking for 10000 plus, he's first question he's probably going to say is, well, do you have legal right to the building? Can you do something with it? So that's our next step before we really pull the train out of the station. Any questions? Any questions? Be glad. I just want to say thank you, Nathan and Mr. Hopper, for what y'all do. But you've already put a lot of hard work into it, and I know there's a lot of hard work coming, but it will really be good for our, our city. Oh, we sure Downtown do. particularly, but our city as a, and county as a whole. Yeah. So thank you for what you folks are doing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, thank Mayor, you. The, the letter, is, letter of intent is the first step, and then we'll be working with uh, Majib, Greg, Brian to iron out a lease agreement as well with these individuals so they can actually physically do work in the city-owned building. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I've got a motion. motion and a second. Okay, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that's approved. Thank you, gentlemen. Item three, the discussion of downtown grant program. 
Mr. Brian, sir. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. Um, this is in relation to the residential incentive grant. It went for um, finance committee, I think it was July 10th, and Mr. Jordan requested that um, council hear um, of the grant. Um, it's the first one we've given, uh, to my knowledge. I don't know of any others that have been given. Uh, so I wanted to bring you up to speed on what this grant is and what it does in relation to this project, the application that we have in hand. Uh, on your chairs, I put um, just an outline of all of the different grants we do offer in the downtown. Some of you may have not seen that yet as new members of council. So that's there for your reference. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you have on that. But we do have a request for um, 211 and 201 North Main Street. It is a residential incentive grant request. Uh, basically, this grant is for the creation of upper floor residential units. Um, it is in line with the master plan. Um, it provides up to $20 per hundred or 20% of the assessed value as the grant. Um, so you can go up to that value in its current assessed value. Um, the rehabilitation expense must exceed two times the amount of the grant that we award. So if, if basically if you getting a hundred dollars you have to expend two hundred to get the hundred. Um, let's see, and I'll just get into the grant and tell you about. Just to clarify what you said now, that's the residential incentive grant that you've received for that. Correct. Grant. It's creating upper floor residential right. apartments. Which building is two oh one? This is, let me show you. I'm pulling out the map right now, Mayor. Okay. I brought too many papers. I think I know, but I'm not sure. I'm sure. It is, it's part of the old, um, old Belk building. That's the elevation, okay. the front facade. The five units, as you can see, you have five, one, two, three, four, and five, five units. This portion here will not be developed yet, so it's basically, um, you know, a good bit of the upper floor of the two or three build, two buildings there. Um, the five units total about 7,300 square feet, and it conforms to the downtown master plan regarding any design and use. Um, uh, it's, it's in concert with the plan. Um, and the improvements do, uh, as proposed, do have a significant effect on the revitalization of our downtown. Uh, it will stimulate the economy, promote business, and create jobs in the construction sector and will also um, you know uh, increase property values and utility usage otherwise vacant building you have none of that the grant request is for the full 20 percent which would equate to a hundred five thousand two hundred nineteen dollars the total project cost is estimated at um, three hundred three fifteen six fifty eight. Yeah. Now the total this has five, been total this, for the five units is three fifteen. Uh -huh. Running 15 fouling. Yes. <coughs> well, so that wouldn't be 60,000, would it? No. The estimate, that's, 
Okay, let me let me go. Brian's got so much paperwork there. I'll, I'm, I'm, I've got to find where I'm at. Here. Okay, I'm just okay. So the minimum private investment, which means the developer would have to contribute, is two hundred ten thousand four hundred thirty nine dollars. The grant totals one hundred five thousand two hundred nineteen dollars at the twenty percent which totals $315,658. The construction estimate for the five units is $525,000. So that's the investment the developer would be making. I get the numbers now. Yeah, let me, I had to clarify that because I, when it came out, it wasn't right. You said it's gonna cost $525,000. Is that hard and soft cost? That hard and softball stuff. Both. Okay. Um, you know, now with this grant, of course, construction drawings need to be completed. They need to be reviewed. They need to be permitted through the permit office. Everything has to be to standard and to code, uh, and it must meet all of those requirements in order to. Get the, get the funding. Um, the project is over, um, according to the grant, a time span of one year. However, uh, more time could be requested if needed. Um, so that is, those are the units, the front elevation and the rear elevation. And then, of course, there's the, the building that it's in. Now, the Downtown Advisory Board um, and staff recommend, you know, the, the grant be approved accord, you know, in accordance with, with the grant and compliance to the program. Um, this would be subject to a general fund appropriation and we would need um, you to call for a public hearing in order for the grant to be uh, awarded all of the necessary paperwork's been kind of prepared, so. Questions? Comment? Any questions? So those jobs created would be what, primarily construction jobs? They'd be related to the project with a, a secondary benefit of hopefully more residential units would bring more Even. investment in businesses, cafes, different things, mm -hmm. which indirectly create more jobs in the downtown and more value. And a construction job, would, be, would these be jobs of people who already work for the construction company or would it be new jobs? It, it could be a combination of both depending on what trade is needed. I'm not really sure I think that's a fair statement. Correct, John? Okay. The, uh, the, the developers here, if you have any questions. Okay. Any other questions or comments? You're not. I vote. So you need a motion. Motion, 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 public public hearing. motion for the public okay. hearing. Yes. Yeah. I'll make the motion to call for the public hearing. Second. I have a motion to second for public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. That will pass. So. Okay. The date for the public hearing. Uh. September 16th. Yeah. Well, it needs. The only question is how far in advance do we need to advertise, and that would yeah. be the only issue. Okay. Can we get? Yeah, we, right, is it going to be ready for the public hearing on the 16th? Yeah. Okay. Everything's ready right okay. now. It's just right. the advertising requirements. Yeah. All right. Okay. 16th. I include that in my motion. Okay, that's good. So that's passed. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Brian. That completes our agenda. Mr. Hyatt, do you have anything? No, sir. Uh, yeah, any, count, any council member have anything? If not, I entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, we adjourn to the 6 o'clock meeting.